This next piece is sort of shocking, and I recommend that you do some serious praying uh, before you watch what's coming, because every time you get involved in satanic things, bad stuff can happen, so I don't want it to happen to you. But we've got a guy who knows what blood tastes like. He sacrificed animals as part of satanic rituals. John's friends even knew him as, quote, Lucifer's son, because John Ramirez was a high priest in the service of his father, the devil. Watch this. John Ramirez grew up in the Bronx, where his relatives practiced Adelia. My father's side came from a family of witches and warlocks. My father was very heavy into Santeria, very heavy into spiritualism. John longed for a relationship with his dad, but his father was abusive. There was no love. There was no compassion. We watched him beat my mother in, in house. He came in drunk most of the time, uh, demanding stuff, asking for stuff. And things were then done a certain way. It was always put down, hurtful words, dummy, stupid, you're going to amount to nothing, that kind of stuff. I would just stand by the door and look and see what he was up to because I was looking to see if there was time for me. Just to have an interaction, right? We did something, my dad and I did something. But he was connected to the demons. He was connected to spiritualism. John's mother was also influenced by Santeria. At his aunt's suggestion, she took John to a tarot card reading. The lady sent the cards. I had 30 days to do a ceremony or I would be blind. So my mother, as a good mother, didn't want nothing to happen to her son, so we did it. They blindfolded me, did a bath for me with herbs, and they started chanting and calling the five main demons from Santeria. From that moment, John's life changed. My whole personality, everything who I stand for as a young boy, was no longer there. I felt like someone took a black blanket and just put it right over me, spiritually. I was an answering not only to my mom and my dad, but I was answering to the demons. John's involvement with Santeria deepened quickly. I was being taught and trained with high-ranked devil worshippers into spiritualism. I went to sinking into funerals, acting like I knew the person that died because I wanted to buy the soul, or that person that died because I can get that soul and put it on somebody and die the same way. When drug dealers got killed in the street, I wanted to run out and get the blood because I can use that human blood to do witchcraft. When John was 13, his father was murdered in a bar fight. John gave credit to the devil for relieving his mother's suffering. I'll be up at 5 in the morning calling out to God saying, help my mother. And no one showed up. But the devil showed up because he killed my dad. As time went on, John also practiced the dark arts outside his apartment. He preyed on Christians in particular. At the clubs, I would go around looking for Christians. And I knew that in the club, you was in the devil's playground. So I knew that if I can get into it and you had a beer to already in your system, I knew all I had to do was just say, listen, I have something to tell you today. And right now you will open the door and you say, what is it you need to tell me? You gave me gateway. Eventually, John became a high priest in Palo Mayambe, a form of African spiritualism. As he became more powerful, John took warfare seriously. The devil told me that I had to go into the neighborhood in the spirit realm in order to weaken it in the natural. Whatever you kill in the spirit realm, you can kill in the natural. So I will leave my body home and I should project myself in different boroughs, different regions, different states, different countries. And as I follow the neighborhood, I would speak curses into the neighborhood, speak things that I wanted to happen into the neighborhood. Sometimes I will go into neighborhoods and I see this group of people in the spirit in the corner praying, holding hands, heads bowed, praying up a storm. And there was no accomplishment in that neighborhood. That neighborhood was sanctified, blessed, to pray. There was, you couldn't touch it. But the other neighborhoods, it was party time. Around that time, John met a girl who intrigued him. I said, well, you're not going to hang out with her. She's good looking. And she invited me to church. She also invited John to meet her parents, who talked to him about Jesus. They had the Bible out. Hey, listen, we want to talk to you about this. I'm like, oh, I can't come to your house. And your parents are crazy. I said, at least let me digest the food. And then you can talk about this Jesus guy. And then after I leave her, I will go to worship. I will go to double church and kill animals all night long. And then I will come back and see her, but she didn't know. John found the Christians amusing and harmless. We had a different system. 
that they had. Their stuff was just kisses, hallelujah, we love you. So I kept coming to church to please her. But I wasn't going to leave people I was committed to. One Sunday morning, the pastor gave an altar call. John went forward, but wasn't prepared for what happened next. I said, well, the devil can't touch me here. I'm in front of the pastor now. I'm protected. All of a sudden. I got demon possessed. I got them by the throat, picked them up and asked, I came for you. And all these big men came out. to see, tried to grab me. I was just throwing people around like right God. And then 200-something people got up and raised up hands. Spiritual warfare for a person that would have killed them on a heartbeat. I saw the power of God in the church. One of the guys who whispered back in my ear and said, Say Jesus is Lord, say Jesus is Lord, say it, say it. I couldn't open my mouth. And then suddenly I was able to say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And the devil left. John was embarrassed about the outburst, but not sure what to do next. One of the church elders approached him a few days later. He said, Jesus wants you to have this. He gave me a sweatshirt. They said, you're a warrior for Christ. For someone to come and say, this is a gift in Christ. He loves you. To me, that was amazing. I couldn't believe that Jesus loved me. But I was committed to the dark side. I was committed to the demons. I was committed to the devil. And I was between two worlds. One night, John decided to end the struggle between the two worlds the only way he knew how. I said, boy, if Jesus can't have me, the devil can't have me. The best way out of suicide. In my ignorance, in my shame, in my, in my mind that was so far gone, spiritually drained, face spiritually drained. John didn't know how to pray, but he began to talk to God. I don't know what they call you, Jesus, whatever they call you in church. I don't like you. I never liked you. I, I never had nothing to do with you. I want no dealings with you. I, want, I never want to be a Christian. I whisper, saying, if you are bigger than the God that I serve, then you show me tonight or leave me alone. John went to sleep and dreamed he was on a subway. The train was filled with people. And the faces are drained, and we were going somewhere that I know that was not good. And as the train was going faster than light, there was a lady dressed very elegant. And she started talking to me in demonic tongues. I understood the tongue. Traitor, you're leaving us. So I try to get into the middle of the train, in the middle of the people, so she won't reach me. Pop hit. And the doors open. I ended up in hell. John stepped out of the subway and into the darkness. As I went to the tunnels of uh, hell, the heat wasn't a heat that you feel on earth. It grips you and the fear ropes around you. There's no hope. The hope is removed. As I got to part of the tunnel, the devil came out bigger and more strong. I never seen him like that. And he said to me, I've been with you since you were nine years old. I've been a father to you. I've given you everything. He said, I'm going to keep you here because if I can keep you here, you won't wake up upstairs which is on earth and he said you belong to me and you're not gonna leave you know too many secrets about my religion and when he went to grab me to snuff me this three foot cross appeared in my hands i couldn't understand how a cross would appear in my hand i never called for the cross i put it on the devil and he felt like nothing he felt like he was a, a baby no powers at the foot of the cross when John woke up, he was a changed man. And I knew that Jesus was the Lord. I bent my knee to the cross. And Jesus came into my life. I took a white piece of paper and I wrote down a servant, a slave of Jesus Christ. I serve you all the days of my life. John threw out all of his witchcraft paraphernalia, but the battle wasn't over. He was under spiritual attack every night for the next month. At night, I felt a presence coming to the room. And then when I would turn around, I would actually sometimes see what was there. Or sometimes I would just slip around and somehow fall asleep up this way. And I would just feel someone's hands just grab me by my throat and try to pick me off of the bed and try to rip my body. I'd rip my soul out of my body. Sometimes they grab me by my feet and the bed would shake. 
and it would bring it up and levitate the bed and levitate me to the point that I was, sometimes I might even reach the ceiling. And I couldn't breathe, and I couldn't cry out. I couldn't talk. I felt like I was choking. I felt like they were choking the life out of me. And I would try to call out for Jesus, uh, and the words wouldn't come out. And then in the end, of the words would come out, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Saves me. And it would go away. John didn't understand why God permitted the nightly struggles. I asked the Lord, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why this torment? Why did you allow these people to abuse me this way? I gave my life to you. I told you I would serve you. And he said to me, I wanted to know how much you love me, how much you trust me. And no devil ever showed up to my house ever again. John says he wouldn't trade anything for what he's found in Christ. For 25 years of my life, I was able to do anything to anybody. Anyway, I count that out to be foolish. To gain Christ. He's my own all. He's the breath that I breathe. He walks with me. I can hear the sound of his voice in my ear. Today, John shares the gospel with I'm everyone angry. he can. Victorious in Christ, I got peace. I'm not empty no more. I got fulfillment. I got a purpose and I have a destiny today. And all because I say yes to the cross. And I am an evangelist for the kingdom of light. No more. An evangelist for the dark side. I expose the dark side every time the Lord gives me a chance. Because you don't have to die in the sins. You don't have to shed blood. Like in Palama Nyumbe. Jesus shed the blood for you. That's the blood that counts. The one at the cross. Folks, I want to tell you, Jesus Christ is real. The devil is real. This isn't some figma of some... Uh, make-believe. It isn't something from Hollywood. It's the real thing. And behind all that we see on this earth, there is a spiritual reality that underlies the material. And Jesus Christ is Lord. <clears throat> he is God Almighty. He is the author of life. He is all-powerful. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Things on, in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth. But the name of Jesus, the devils will quake. Now, don't dabble in the occult. Don't play with this stuff. The devil wants to destroy you. The thief comes to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ wants you to have life. And I assure you today that if you lift the cross of Jesus Christ in your life, every demon will have to flee. You have absolute authority over Satan. Absolute authority in Jesus' name. 